this morning I'm going to try to go um, take some forest service roads to Sequoia Lake. Um, that's on the way towards uh, Sequoia National Forest. The purpose of this is to take back roads, um, so they're unimproved roads, to get a little practice and have some fun riding on, on the dirt a little bit, um, less challenging to build up my skills. But there's a second purpose, which is to get into uh, deeper into the forest, um, you have to go through a toll. And I want to avoid the toll, and I notice that there's a bunch of these Forest Service roads, or unimproved roads, that join back up to the main road after the toll. And I'm curious um, whether or not these roads go all the way through, and if I can just bypass the toll road, um, or the toll gate. And I think that'd be kind of cool. Um, I don't know how good the condition of those roads are, but this little segment that I'm going to do today to Sequoia Lake is part of the route that I will take. And so um, if it's in pretty good shape, then I suspect the rest of it will also be in pretty good shape. They do have a lot of off-highway um, vehicles that take these roads a lot, so that they kind of maintain them but I'm not really sure how well and, and which ones they maintain. So I'm kind of doing a little scouting today to see how it goes. Should be a short ride. Then I'm just going to jot back into Dunlop, uh, the town down there, to get some gas. Um, and that's about it. It should be a short ride today. So let's go check it out. There's a ranger right up here clearing the road from some downfall. And he's blocking the road, so i got to wait. Didn't get very far. Recording. I just spoke with the ranger about whether or not there's a, a route across the mountains here, the Sierra Nevadas, heading towards Nevada. Um, and he said he only knew of one road that was constructed for the fires recently that goes all the way across. It's an unimproved road, a lot of potholes, very twisty. So it's by the Kearns. I'm not sure where that's at, so I'll have to look it up. Um, if I don't find a route across directly over heading towards Independence, which is a small city, which is directly east of here, then I'll have to go all the way north to, through Yosemite or all the way south uh, near or more near Bakersfield, which I kind of want to avoid because I'd rather do unimproved track. That's why I got an adventure bike. So I'll talk to some locals when I get gas a little later, see if they know of anything. Okay, I actually wanted to, you know, I want to talk a little bit about the bike, uh, just a little bit. Two things in particular. One is the radiator. I noticed it got a little bit of radiator damage. Um, just like a rock flew up and it must have hit it. I don't know if that was on, ro on the freeway or on the dirt, probably on the dirt. Um, and I didn't have a protection grill on there. Hindsight, probably when you buy a new bike and you're going to do a little bit of off, regardless if you're doing off or on road, because you could hit a, a rock on the, on the asphalt as well and do the same thing and damage it. I mean, it could take quite a bit of abuse, but if it punctures one of the pipes and you lose fluid, then you're SOL. you got to get a new radiator. Um, second is the tires. And I've seen a lot of comments on my YouTube videos. People say, oh, I should get more knobby tires and so on and so forth. I don't, I don't really know because this is my first bike, you know, but I've ridden, you know, BMX, road bikes, uh, mountain bikes. Um, yeah, I do understand the concept of, you know, knobbies and all that, but I do do a lot of riding um, on freeways and highways or improved roads. So having knobbies, that's where the, the negative effect would be. The stock tires that come with these are more, they're 80 20s, you know, 80 street, 20 dirt. They seem to be adequate for unimproved roads, and I'm not doing any single track. However, I do wonder if I had knobbies, if this, you know, the loose gravel on the unimproved roads, I'd get a little bit more grip and a little bit more stability. Something to think about. I don't have a house, so I don't have a place where I can keep an extra set of tires. So I just kind of have to wing it with what I got. Anyway, just two thoughts. Recording. Okay, made it to the turnoff. So this road goes to uh, Millwood, which I went to the other day, right? So it's four and a half miles. And that's pretty much where Sequoia Lake is. 
and then I'll just from there I should just jump back onto uh, I-180 or 180 it's not interstate and then head back down into uh, the lap so it's uh looks unimproved should be fun let's check it out well I may have lied this road is actually paved A lot of gravel on the asphalt though, which I'm gonna to have to be careful. Uh, I think it's a little bit more slick than just straight up gravel. A couple of campers. Wow, it's these beautiful forest service roads that are not very well traveled that are just absolutely amazing, you know? You don't have to go at speed to enjoy them. It's just a beautiful ride. This is what I like about having a motorcycle. I wish I would have known about this a lot earlier in my life. Just the fun you can have just being out on a bike Recording. Wow, you could see this area was burned, you know, in the last few years, and you can see the deadfall and the charred stumps all through here. I'm not really sure what this uh, ground cover is. It looks like some type of heather or something like that. But yeah, you can see the, the highway going up over there on the other side, the other ridge. It's beautiful. Recording. Okay, this is a little bit more challenging area. Well, maybe I got through the worst of it. But yeah, a lot of boulders. Very uh, bumpy road on this section here. Recording. Recording. Wow, look at this little gulch right here. All these burned trees. And they didn't chop any down, they just left them. You know, creates deadfall, which is kind of dangerous. But this is a remote area, so it's not a problem. But it gives a lot of habitat for the, you know, the animals that live around here, the birds. But yeah, now I'm heading down the hill, it looks like. So I should be getting close to my destination. It's the sticks that I'm more worried about. Well, sticks and sharp rock fall. The rock fall, when it's sharp, can damage your rim if you're, you know, riding a bead, you know, you don't have inner tubes or cast rims. And sticks, I'm worried because they fling up and they can damage, uh, you know, cables and my radiator. So I have to be careful. Recording. Okay, I had to turn off the engine, just enjoy this view. That is amazing. I think that's the road I'm going to be going down right there. There is nobody out here. 
Recording. Okay, I made it down to Millwood. So now it's just a paved road back to the main road. I ran into a truck. He's right there. He's going up. And this road is not wide enough to pass. And he kind of backed down just a little bit. But there's a ton of super deep, loose gravel on the side. I almost dropped the bike. Uh, but I made it. Just had to put my foot down a couple of times. So now I'm going to head back and uh, get some gas. Wow, there are a lot of people camping this weekend. And I was coming around a corner and there was a red van right there. I was like, holy crap, scared the shit out of me. Uh, I got quick reflexes, so it wasn't a problem. But I do have to be mindful that there will be other people on these roads, especially on the weekends. So I did uh, plug in my key light air vent jacket airbag. Yes, my jacket has an airbag in it. Now if I get thrown from the motorcycle, at least uh, I'll have neck and upper torso protection. Some protection, better than none, I guess. I've been really happy with the Helite jacket. Uh, even in really hot weather, it keeps me pretty cool. As long as I got airflow. I'll put a link to the jacket that I have in the description. It's uh, not cheap, but you know, how much money is your life worth? 